Another pattern of inheritance that isn't quite as common is something called codominance. And the best example of that is human blood type. I'm not talking about Rh positive and negative. That is inherited separately, and that's a situation where Rh positive is completely dominant over Rh negative. This is just ABO blood type. And it is a good example of codominance. I'm going to give you a definition of codominance, and it will make more sense when we go through the example. So, in this pattern of inheritance, one allele is completely dominant over another, but there's a third allele. And that third allele, when it gets together with another allele, is either completely dominant over it or they both are expressed. So another way of saying that is two alleles are completely dominant. They're each completely dominant over a third allele, but not completely dominant over each other. When they occur together, they're both expressed. So not completely dominant over each other. Human blood type. We're talking about some cell surface markers that occur on red blood cells. You either have type A markers, type B markers, no markers, or both A and B markers. And here's how that happens. I'm going to list the possible genotypes and then we'll look at what the phenotypes are, and it'll make a little more sense. So three alleles for human blood type. So rather than just having two, we're now looking at a situation where there are three possible alleles. And here's how they're written. Capital I with a superscript A. Capital I with a superscript B, and then small letter I. We call this the type A allele, this the type B allele, and this is the type O allele. So here are the possibilities. Here are your possible genotypes. You can get two of the type A, one from each parent. So in this case, you're homozygous for the type A allele. And your phenotype, what kind of blood are you going to have, what would we call your blood type? This will be type A blood. Maybe you got an A and an O. An A from one parent and an O from the other. Type A allele is completely dominant over type O allele. So in this case, you would be heterozygous, but you would have type A blood. We would say this person is heterozygous for the type A allele. Same thing goes for type B. You either got two type B alleles, or you got a B and an O. So one of these is going to be homozygous for type B blood and one's heterozygous. But either way, we have type B blood. Okay, let's continue it over here. Genotype, phenotype. The only way you can get type O blood is if you got two type O alleles. Remember, it's little i. You need to be homozygous recessive. 
to have type O blood. What happens if you get an A and a B? Who's dominant? Neither. They are both expressed. So if you got an A allele from one parent and a B allele from the other, you have type AB blood. Both are expressed. Why? Type A codes for a type A glycoprotein. A surface marker on your cell that is type A. Type B gene codes for a type B glycoprotein. Type O codes for no cell surface markers, no glycoproteins on the surface. What is the big deal about that? Well, here's how those different blood types are going to look. If you've got any of the type A gene, so whether you're homozygous for it or heterozygous, you are making this cell surface marker. If you have the recipe for making it, you're making it. So for these type A's, we're just going to do an imaginary marker on this red blood cell. We'll make these triangles. This would be the type A markers on the cell. Type B, you're going to make a marker also. Even if you just got one of that recipe, you, you've got the recipe for making that marker and it's going to be on your cell surface. Let's make those little purple loops. Again, imaginary. So this would be your type B. If you're type O, it means you don't have a recipe for making A markers or B markers. You have none. Okay? If you got one of each recipe, you're going to make both. If you're type A B blood, you're going to have B markers and you're going to have A markers. So this would be type AB blood. This is important to realize because it's not really that one is dominant over the other. It just means if you have the recipe for making that protein on one of your strands of DNA, you're going to make that protein. Making markers is going to mask not making markers. Kind of like purple and white. If purple is the presence of a pigment and white is the absence of a pigment, purple is going to mask that. So it doesn't mean that white coats for nothing. It's just the absence. So it's going to be masked by the protein that produces something, if that makes sense. So this is codominance. A and B are not dominant over each other, but they are dominant over type O. In looking at patterns of inheritance for this, we need to use these alleles for doing our cross. So I want to just do a couple of sample crosses for human blood type. And then I just want to talk for a minute about who can donate to whom and who can receive from whom. Because that's what's happening on this chart on the screen. So I'm going to refer back to this chart when we talk about who can donate to whom and why. I'm going to erase this for now so we have room for our crosses. genotypes for these two individuals. So type AB would have a type A allele. Remember, this is how we write the alleles. We don't do A and B and O. We do it this way. So this would be the genotype of our type AB parent. 
and this would be the genotype of our type O parent. Doesn't matter which parent we put on the side versus on the top of our Punnett square. I'll do our type O here and our type AB here. So it's interesting to look at the offspring in this cross. So as it turns out, all our offspring are heterozygous, but 50% of our offspring would be type A and 50% would be type B. None of our offspring have the same blood type as the parents. A, B times O, none of your offspring are going to have your same blood type. Let's do another cross. Let's do a parent who is heterozygous for a, for a blood type. Let's say someone is heterozygous type B. So that would be one type B allele and one O allele. So heterozygous type B times heterozygous A. So same situation, one type A allele and one type O allele. Draw our square. Doesn't matter which parent goes where. So here this baby is going to be type AB. This baby is going to be heterozygous for type B. Heterozygous for type A. And we get a type O baby. So in this case, we end up with babies of all kinds of blood type. We could have type AB, B, A, and O. So in this cross, where both parents are heterozygous for their blood type, we end up with offspring that have every possible blood type. So blood type crosses are pretty interesting. Again, this is co-dominant. A and B are both completely dominant over O, but they're not completely dominant over each other. When you have one of each allele, they are both expressed. So talking about who can donate to whom, we need to think about our immune system. And the purpose of those cell surface markers is so we recognize self. We recognize blood cells that are our type, and we fight off blood cells that are a different type. If you're type O, it means you have no cell surface markers. So you're going to fight off anything that you perceive as foreign. Any type of blood with markers is going to be foreign to you. So if you're type O, you can't have A blood, B blood, or AB blood. Because all of those have markers. If you're type AB, you can accept all blood types because you have both kinds of markers. So, so a cell with no markers isn't going to make your immune system mad. A cell with A markers is going to be self. B markers are going to be self. The same doesn't apply, though, for A and B. A cannot take blood from AB because it will recognize the B as being foreign and fight it off. It has anti-B antibodies. B has anti-A antibodies, and O has anti-A and B antibodies. They develop these proteins, these defensive proteins, to fight off the markers that are perceived as foreign. Antigen refers to a marker that can be perceived as foreign to other blood types. So this is just another term for that cell surface marker. It's being called an antigen. That's just a general term for something that another immune system would perceive as foreign. So that's how codominance works, and that's how human blood type works. The next category of inheritance we're going to look at is when genetic 
disorders are carried on the dominant allele. So we've already said that most human genetic disorders are carried on the recessive allele. This is autosomally inherited albinism. There is an X-linked form of albinism that's carried on the X chromosome. But this would be autosomal recessive inheritance. And remember that the way this pattern works is if you have two carriers, they are going to have an affected child. They, one out of four of their children could have the disease. 50% are going to be carriers also, and 25% on average are going to be healthy. That's the way it happens if it's carried on the recessive allele. But what if it's carried on the dominant allele? Well, that's the case for a couple of human disorders. And let's look at what that would be. I'm going to use achondroplasia as our example. It's a form of dwarfism. And that gene is carried on the dominant allele. So these are twin brothers. Obviously not identical twins, but one is normal and one has achondroplasia. What does achondroplasia mean? A means without. Chondro is referring to cartilage. And as you know, when you're developing and then growing, cartilage gets converted to bone. What happens in these little babies developing bodies is their bodies start at some point during development they start to re-sequester some of this cartilage. And these cartilage cells aren't available then to convert to bone. If you notice, these two boys have the same size head and actually have the same size torso. What's different is the length of their limbs. So those little babies don't have enough cartilage left in their limbs to grow to full stature. Achondroplasia. That is carried on the dominant allele. Okay, so I'm going to use capital D for dwarfism. This is going to be the dwarfism allele. Remember, in normal autosomal recessive inheritance, this would be the disease allele, but in this case, this is normal. If this is the disease allele, then that's autosomal dominant inheritance of a disorder rather than recessive. And in that case, the heterozygous individuals have the disease. Again, I mentioned before, you need to look at the heterozygous individual to see what type of inheritance pattern we're talking about. Heterozygous individuals have the disorder. So in this case, here are the possible genotypes. Just as before, homozygous dominant, heterozygous, homozygous recessive. So these are our possible genotypes. Let's look at the possible phenotypes. Little d, little d in this case is normal. Big D, little d, this individual is going to have dwarfism, achondroplasia. Why? Because this is the allele that carries the disease. This is the disease allele. This is actually lethal. It's called a lethal allele combination. It's too much of a bad thing. These babies never develop to birth. Okay, so let's look at a cross. Let's say both parents have dwarfism. So dwarfism mom times dwarfism dad. They have dwarfism. That doesn't mean they're big D, D, big D. That means they're heterozygous. So two heterozygous individuals. If they were homozygous dominant, they were never born. Okay? So let's look at the Punnett square for that. Let's do it right here. So 
So two heterozygous individuals. Look at this. This is in bed. Our first offspring, lethal. 25% lethal. 50% are going to have dwarfism. But look at this. This is crazy. Two parents with dwarfism, 25% of their offspring on average are going to not have the disease at all. They're going to be normal. So 25% lethal, 50% dwarfism, and 25% normal. And really, this normal individual, even though both of his parents had dwarfism, he doesn't have the dwarfism allele on either one of his chromosomes. So this baby would never have a baby with dwarfism unless he married a, a, someone with dwarfism, then he would. But if he made it with a person that didn't have dwarfism, they would not have a dwarfism baby, even though both of his parents had it. So that is dominant inheritance, autosomal dominant. Again, you look at the heterozygous individual, and if they have the disease, then that disease is being inherited on the dominant allele, not the recessive allele, as most are. So this just shows that, again, this would be an affected father. So for whatever the condition is, Huntington's disease is another example of this. Affected father, unaffected mom. So this blue is going to be the disease allele. And you can see this heterozygous offspring is affected. They have the disorder. Heterozygous offspring has the disorder. You have to have two of the recessive gene to not have the disorder. And then again, lethal, lethal allele combinations. In this case, big Y, big Y gives you dead baby rats. 